This video is a new and improved rewritten, re-recorded and re-edited 2.0 of a previous One Piece 101. The old video is still up if you'd like to watch it, but it was in serious need of an update, so enjoy. If you want to get past me, then it'll be over my dead body. I've been fighting pirates since long before you were born. There's no reason to show them any sympathy. Outlaws deserve no mercy. However, family, well that is a different story. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. And today we are going to take a look at quite possibly one of the most paramount marines to have ever existed within this world, and a man who is known throughout as nothing less than a hero, Monkey D. Garp. Monkey D. Garp is a tall, broad, and imposing figure who was first introduced to us an awfully long time ago, way back on the cover of chapter 92, at the sprightly age of 76. Garp presents himself as a wildly eccentric man with several highly detrimental but exceptionally comedic character quirks, such as frequent narcolepsy and being absent-minded. In general, Garp is also quite a jovial being and is almost always seen sporting a traditional Will of D smile. And having brought that up, it's difficult to go much further without noting Garp's profound influence on the world. Not just in his own career, as we'll get to, but more through that of his spawn, as Garp happens to be the father of the most wanted man in the world, Monkey D. Dragon, as well as the paternal grandfather of the ever infamous future pirate king, Monkey D. Luffy. Thus making it arguable that Garp has incidentally caused the Marines much more trouble than he has alleviated during his time with them. In regards to Dragon, Garp's true feelings toward his son are unknown at this point in time, although he does seem to regard his role as the leader of the sworn enemy of the world government with startling casualness. This may be due to the fact that while they have completely differing ideologies, the two of them do have at least one thing in common, which is their hatred of the world nobles, for whom the Marines rather unfortunately exist to serve. As for Luffy, Garp once held high hopes that his grandson would become a Marine and considers his mind to have been poisoned into accepting unrealistic dreams of piracy by redhead Shanks. But despite that, Garp seems oddly proud whenever he receives news of his grandson being involved in a big event, even the ones that directly hinder the world government, such as the mass breakout of Impel Down. And there is more to Garp's family, but we'll get to that in a bit because we have some very important history to cover first. Starting off, our living legend here first joined the Marines a whopping 56 years prior to the current timeline, along with his close acquaintances, future Vice Admiral Sudo and future Fleet Admiral Sengoku. And these two would form the pillars of Garp's close relationships over his lifetime, with he and Sengoku sharing an almost comedic duo style relationship in which Garp seems to greatly enjoy annoying him. But here Garp would work diligently for 18 years, maintaining peace throughout the world as best he could, which included chasing various young troublemakers such as the future Pirate King himself, Goldie Roger, which would develop into one of the greatest rivalries this planet has ever known, with Garp having fought and cornered him on many occasions. However, in each case, he was unable to apprehend Roger. And now I'm going to place a very sudden super surprise spoiler warning for events that have taken place during the Wano arc, oddly enough. If you are not in Act 3 and not keen to have some major spoilers thrown in your face, then please do skip to this time in the video. But for everyone else, let us proceed. However, on at least one fateful occasion, Garp would join forces with his eternal rival, Roger, in an event that would become known as the God Valley Incident. This particular affair would see Garp and Roger team up to combat one of the greatest threats this world has ever known, the Rocks Pirates, led by Captain Rox D. Zebek. Now, while we still know next to nothing about Rox himself, it is very much worth noting that his crew at the time consisted of some figures you may have heard of that go by the names of Golden Lion Cheeky, Edward Newgate, Charlotte Lin Lin, Kaido, and many, many more. And although they were undoubtedly much younger and not quite at the pinnacle of power that they would most certainly rise to be as emperors of the sea, their strength was nothing to scoff at. Despite this, after a disgustingly hard fought battle, Garp and Roger would emerge victorious and afterwards Garp would become known as the hero of the Marines. But Garp's legacy would not end here as he continued his impactful career for a further 38 years with many infamous exploits, one of which was the immediate dismissal of the notorious pirate Don Chin Zhao with but a single punch, which earned Garp another epithet being Garp the Fist. On another occasion, Garp also teamed up with longtime ally Sengoku to face off directly against Golden Lion Shiki in a battle that destroyed half of Marineford, but still resulted in Garp's victory. And just while we're on this, as a combatant, Garp represents some of the greatest raw power that we have ever seen in the series. He has a very simple brawler style approach to combat, choosing his fists as his primary weapon, each of which possesses world shaking strength. However, he does on occasion also use weapons and he has been known to hand throw cannonballs at enemies, which actually makes them far more destructively potent 
important than being fired from an actual cannon. And when Garp is feeling particularly in the mood for weaponry, he will also wield a staggeringly huge ball and chain, which is barely smaller than the size of a marine battleship. Plus, in the realm of Haki, Garp is also confirmed to have mastered both observation and armament Haki, the latter of which should strike terror into the hearts of anybody facing this man, as it only makes his fists that much more deadly. And so, as a result of his supreme abilities and exploits, Garp has been offered the position of Marine Admiral on numerous occasions. However, he has turned down each and every one of them, preferring to remain a Vice Admiral so as not to be under the direct control of the World Nobles. But despite his wealth of accomplishments, there was always one mountain that Garp was never quite able to conquer, being the Pirate King. Nor would he ever receive more chances to do so, as one day out of nowhere, Roger turned himself into the Marines. Now at this point, Garp and Roger had developed quite a strong bond from their various skirmishes, with Garp harboring incredible respect for Roger, and Roger even considering Garp as much of a friend as his own crewmates. And with this in mind, Roger made one last request of Garp, which was to protect his unborn son, a man who would grow up to become known as Fire Fist Ace. And Garp acquiesced to Roger's appeal, believing that no child should be branded a criminal due to the actions of their parents. And so after his long Longtime rival was executed, Garp adopted Ace and took him to Dawn Island to be raised by a group of mountain bandits led by Curly Dadan. And this brings up the sketchy topic of Garp's parenting techniques, which can be described as questionable at best and blatant child abuse at worst. The first example of which is choosing to have his children raised by mountain bandits. And you know with this in mind, is it really a surprise that both Ace and Luffy turned out to be notorious criminals? But when Garp was present, his parenting was actually much worse. A sort of extreme tough love approach in which he would do things like throw Luffy into a valley and force him to survive so that he could grow up to become a strong marine. Whatever the case, his strategy clearly failed as Ace went on to become the captain of the Spade Pirates and later a division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates. But despite the plague of criminals that Garp had inadvertently released upon the world through his parenting, he remained a strong presence within the Marines. Which brings us to his first appearance in the series, which occurred during the Diary of Kobe Meppo cover story. And here, after an incident involving Captain Morgan, Garp decided to take charge of Kobe and Hill Meppo, training them into the incredibly competent Marines that would go on to appear in the Return to Water 7 arc which saw Garp visit Luffy after his grandson's victory on the judicial island of Ennis Lobby. However, shortly after this event, tragedy would strike Garp as Ace was defeated by Blackbeard on Bonaro Island, then turned into the Marines and subsequently scheduled to be executed, which of course would force Whitebeard's hand and commence an event known as the Paramount War. And during this time, Gart was put in an exceptionally unenviable position. There was no denying that he greatly cared for Ace, even coming to consider him as much a grandson as Luffy is. But at the same time, it would not be hyperbole to say that the fate of the world as we knew it was at stake, because there was a very real possibility that the Marines could have been defeated in the Paramount War, which would have resulted in plummeting the world into untold anarchy. And so, torn between family and global stability, Garp remained primarily inactive during the war, and when he did act, it was with great trepidation, such as when he confronted his grandson, but ultimately let Luffy punch him and make his way to Ace. And from here, a series of events played out that saw the death of Ace at the hands of then Marine Admiral Akainu. An action that threw Garp into a rage, and he even had his sights set on killing Akainu, prompting his longtime comrade Sengoku to restrain him. And following the Paramount War, it was stated that Garp resigned from his position within the Marines. However, he did still remain a part of the organization in the capacity of an instructor to train the next generation. However, Garp was also saddled with diplomatic duties as well, with one particular example being that he was tapped to escort King Neptune and his family to and from the Reverie, which took place on the Holy Land of Marijuana. And here we have a second spoiler warning for this video. This is another one that you should be aware of if you have not begun Act 3 of Wano. It's fairly short, but not at all insignificant. So once again, if you're keen to not know anything, please skip to this time. As for everyone else, here we go again. After successfully returning King Neptune and his family to Fishman Island, Garp had the unfortunate role of informing them of an incident that occurred during the Reverie, involving the Alabaster Kingdom. He is then seen leaving Fishman Island and being informed of the startling news that two of his former foes, Big Mom, and Kaido had formed an alliance that threatens the very stability of the world. Some more fun facts about Garp. While not confirmed either way at the time of this recording, it is entirely possible that in addition to armament and observation Haki, Garp may also be capable of wielding Conqueror's Haki. This is due to the fact that he said Luffy had inherited the ability to invoke it, although whether it was inherited directly from Garp or even by blood ties in general is very vague and well and truly up for debate. Garp's first appearance in the manga medium actually predates One Piece, as he was a figure introduced in Oda's prototype for the series, Romance Dawn, version two. In this incarnation of the story, Garp is the one who gives Luffy his straw hat, although according to Oda, his plan was always for this to be done by Shanks, and it was not featured in Romance Dawn, so as to give the moment more impact in the eventual One Piece. 
Despite his impact on the series, Garp has been generally unpopular with the Japanese fanbase, having ranked a pitiful 74th place in the fifth character popularity poll. And even more shockingly, not ranking at all in the sixth poll. With that said, Garp's prominence is such that he has appeared in no less than three One Piece films, being Strong World, Film Z, and One Piece Stampede. And finally, a truly useless fact, in an anime-only addition to the series, Garp once stated that he has eaten 842 donuts without sleeping or taking any form of break, whilst he was trying to attain the world record for donut eating. The word trying implying that he failed. And I think we all now know who would be the next most likely contender for that world record. Mmm, forbidden immoral donuts. But that pretty much does it for Garp. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece, 101. Is there a chance we may get to see your face more often in the future? Look, there's always a chance, but to be honest, it's a bit of a hassle. When I first started the channel, I actually used to do face cam chapter reviews and such, but adding that sort of video just makes these so much more time consuming to make. Like you need to set up the shot, make sure that the lighting is somewhat decent, sync the recording with the mic, also make sure that you yourself look somewhat presentable, and export and upload a video that would probably be at least five times the size of what I make currently. And I just don't see it as worth it, but you know, you'll probably see more of my face at random intervals for whatever reason. Hi. Do you play soccer? Not anymore. I did play soccer for about 10 years back when it was officially called soccer in Australia. It's football now, but I primarily played defense and I do very much miss the sport. You only pick epic questions and am not that epic to be featured on you Q&A video. Oh, okay. Well, that's a shame. <laughs>